Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi resigned on July 21st. This followed a political crisis over the past week as his coalition of centrist and right-wing forces unraveled. President Sergio Mattarella has dissolved the parliament and called for fresh elections on September 25th. The resignation of Draghi marks an end to an unusual coalition where erstwhile opponents came together under a technocrat. How did this coalition form in the first place and how did it end up collapsing? Maurizio Capola of the leftist political party Potere al Popolo explains. We have to remember that Draghi uh, was uh, designed to uh, to be the new prime minister after two governments of Giuseppe Conte in the same parliamentary time. So we had like elections in 2018. We had the first uh, Conte government that was a coalition between uh, La Lega and the Cinque Stelle, the Five Star Movement. Uh, so far right with like the populist option in Italy. Then we had the second government of Conte that was like uh, the Five Star Movement with the center left. And then there was like the contradictions inside of the of the Italian government uh, were too huge to continue. Also in the context of like uh, the money uh, linked to the pandemic that was uh, distributed from uh, from Europe, like, like the Next Generation EU, the Recovery Fund. And uh, so uh, there was a need for a government of national unity, uh, how they called it. And uh, it was like uh, the, the government of the best, how they called it. And um, and they choose uh, Mario Draghi. Mario Draghi is the former uh, chief of the European Central Bank, the former chief of the Italian Central Bank, but also a chief of Goldman Sachs in the in the, in, in these days. So Sergio Mattarella, the president of Italy, uh, choose uh, him to have like the the assurance that like the different interests inside of the bourgeoisie of the Italian bourgeoisie can be held together with like uh, a man that can be defined as uh, super partes at, um, non uh, um, like non aligned in in in, uh, in a political sense so like a technician that can in a way uh, distribute the money spend the money um, of the next generation you uh, in the in a good way of course for capital and uh, uh, and uh, in the sense of neoliberal reforms so this is like the way this coalition uh, was built everyone uh, in the parliament every party knew that uh, without uh, like uh, a man uh, like mario draghi it would be difficult to have like um, to continue with this parliamentary time so that would be uh, anticipated elections but it was like a too uh, difficult time in february 2021 to have advanced uh, and anticipated elections. So the party said, okay, we give our uh, support to this government. Now, what is ha- what happened in the last days? Uh, no one expected it. Uh, not even left forces said that there will be like uh, a, a couple of months before the end of this parliamentary time uh, that Draghi will uh, retire. There is like, there was a, a crisis inside of the Five Star Movement. Giuseppe Conte, the former prime minister, uh, stopped his support uh, to uh, uh, Draghi because he said there are some reforms we do not accept. But of course, every other uh, political party in the parliament started then to make their own calculations how it would be the best to uh, to to deal for having like the best situation in in the next government. So the far right, for example, they have like uh, in the polls, uh, everyone saying that they can reach 35, 40%. So they said, okay, maybe it's the moment to to ask for anticipated um, um, elections. And so they also stopped to give the support uh, to Mario Draghi. At the end, what, we, what can be said is that there is a huge contrast between the political institutional crisis Italy is living today and the general situation of the working people in Italy. There is no, um, there is a huge contrast in the sense that People are suffering from inflation, like high increasing prices for uh, basic goods uh, and so on and so on. And uh, the, the, in the institutions, the parties are like, uh, yeah, having this situation, uh, not taking in consideration what really is going on uh, in, the, in, the, in, in society. And this is like uh, the, the situation we are living uh, today. It's a devastating situation. The Draghi government came to power at a difficult time for the country as it struggled with the aftermath of a disastrous first wave of the pandemic. His mandate was to impose policies agreed upon by financial institutions and continue on the path of reforms. What has been the legacy of the Draghi government? During this period, how have various political formations, especially the far right, grown? 
as I said before, Draghi was like implemented as a, a man over uh, the, uh, the, pra- the, the, yeah, the particular interests. So uh, a man that could bring together all the uh, interests of the Italian bourgeoisie. And, uh, and it was implemented in 2021, in February. So uh, in a period in which everyone was thinking, okay, the pandemic is uh, become, it's, uh, coming to an end and so on and so on. Then we had the war. So he revealed himself like as a, as a really the, the man for the bourgeoisie, the man for private interests of the capital. For example, he is increasing military spendings like the famous 2% of GDP asked by NATO and the US. Uh, on the ecolo- ecology level, he's g- going back to carbon. So he's going back to like uh, 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 fossil and uh, to, 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 to energy uh, sources that are destroying uh, uh, our nature. Uh, on foreign relations, he's like a very clear uh, position against Russia and in favor of, uh, of NATO and US, but he's making deals with Algeria. Like we know that in Algeria, democratic rights, social rights are not guaranteed. He's making deals with Israel and Egypt, also for, uh, for questions of uh, energy and gas. So two countries that are not very known for, uh, for a, a, a well-functioning democracy. He did nothing, anything, Uh, No measures against tax evasion, a problem that in Italy is really a huge problem. Um, He abolished the the delay of prohibition during the crisis. So at the beginning of his uh, his time in uh, February 2021, this this meant that a lot of people uh, got unemployed or got only precarious jobs. So this is like, these are the legacies of Mario Draghi today. It is clearly like uh, politics made for capital, made for neoliberal reforms, made for the distribution of the money that everyone in Italy can be okay, I mean the bourgeoisie, and then we can have new elections in 2023. Now the time is like, it's, we suppressed a little bit of months and now we will have like anticipated elections in September or October. So what is coming in the next months, it's at the electoral level, it's exactly this. Like there is a, uh, there will be a rise of the of the far right. Uh, we can already uh, uh, foresee, and uh, there will be like a huge uh, discussion how the left should also uh, participate in these elections in a context in which, of course, we have uh, a huge um, or a growing quantity of people not going to vote. So like abstentionism, it's it's a very important thing. And the second thing, we have a lack of social mobilization by working class. And this is something that is not only now, but it's something we we are experiencing uh, since 10 years, more or less. There was no huge general demonstration for social rights and so on in Italy. It's not like in France. I I always uh, make this comparison with France. In France, we had the Gilets Jaunes, the Yellow West, uh, who, which was in a way also like uh, a social mobilization that gave the power and the possibility to the um, uh, far left and to the left uh, uh, political forces to grow and to implement their program. This is something lacking. The class consciousness is really on the deepest level since years, and this is a huge challenge. The polls, they all are saying that uh, the far right, the right coalition composed by the Brothers of Italy of Giorgia Meloni, La Lega of Matteo Salvini and Forza Italia of Silvio Berlusconi is still there, Silvio Berlusconi. This coalition, uh, they are saying that they will reach 35 to 40% more or less. So they will have the opportunity to make, to govern the country. This will, will be something very problematic also for like the, the liberal forces because they have a very clear uh, non-European uh, um, a program uh, that attacks also like the working class uh, interests, of course. So there will be like a continuation in these attacks of the working class, but like in other way, they have like this non-European uh, approach that, uh, that uh, of course, for the uh, center-left parties and forces, that's very important to be aligned to the European Union, to be aligned to the NATO and the US. And um, so the Democratic Party is making like already today, uh, Letta, the responsible, the general secretary of uh, the Democratic Party, already spoke about we need to fight against the 
the huge evil that is like the far right. And for that, we need like uh, also their like cohesion, uh, respect the national interests and so on and so on. There is no not such a thing that the national interest, there is only class interests. And I think this is the huge problem of the Democratic Party. They continue with neoliberal programs with uh, uh, representing the interests of the bourgeoisie, of one fraction of the bourgeoisie. And then we have the, a third element that should be taken in consideration. We had in 2018, the um, Five Star Movement uh, reaching 34% of the consensus, the electoral consensus. Today, there is not no, uh, no uh, populist option anymore. The Five Star Movement is uh, divided because uh, Foreign Ministry um, Luigi De, Di Maio uh, got out of the of the five star movement and made his own organization own uh, party and Giuseppe Conte with the crisis we are living now is also like the his consensus is decreasing so there is like uh, this is more or less the situation institutionally and for the elections the left is one of the few political sectors that did not join the draghi experiment in fact trade unions and the left were in the forefront of opposition to many of draghi's policies what tasks and challenges lie ahead for the left, keeping in mind the rapid political developments. The situation is very difficult and complicated for the left. Today, we have no uh, left in the in the parliament. We have uh, a central left that is like supporting the Democratic Party and so was also supporting the government of Mario Draghi. So I think uh, the parties supporting Mario Draghi cannot be considered as left parties. And uh, and um, there are like different levels of, of challenges for the left. So on the election, uh, electoral level, on the institutional level, uh, we will have to collect signatures for participating uh, at the elections. This will be a huge task because if the elections will be at the end of September or the beginning of, of October, we have to collect a lot of signatures in a couple of weeks. So this is, this is already one first uh, element that is like also um, blocking uh, the democratic participation of the left. So this is like, uh, this is important to, to take in consideration. Then there is, I think, a general task because what we are seeing today is like that the ruling class classes are no longer able to govern and the governed, governed classes became aware of their strength and the lack of alternatives within the existing framework. But the problem is that this is expressing itself in like abstentionism. So people not going to vote, the disillusion is too big in, uh, in, the, uh, in the institutional uh, framework. So uh, what the big challenge is for the future is like uh, to work on organizing these classes, this uh, uh, exploited classes to uh, raise and to increase the subjective uh, awareness of these classes and, uh, and to build social protest. Because we know that even in elections, if you have a strong left without social movements, without social protests, without the pressure from outside of the institutions, it will be very difficult also for a genuine left to make reforms in this general context of crisis and of, uh, of, of yeah, and, and repression against, against the uh, social forces. So this is like, I think, the, the biggest task for having radical change. We have to build class consciousness, organize the classes, the oppressed classes.